I wish more people would step up and, and actually make change this way, but, but how do we go about doing that? How do we go about actually changing a $60 billion a year industry? Yeah. You know what I mean? When, when there's so much money involved in this on one side, how is it that we can make this change? People were like, well, you're not protesting enough. You're not doing it. That's not going to make change. The only way to make change is to start holding people accountable. Right. Let, let's get laws passed to, in order to uh, put cameras in the courtrooms where they could be watched. Yeah. Let's let's stop saying, oh, this has to be a closed court case because of the kids. No, it's not. It's it's flat out just to protect the judges and bad lawyers. Right. You know, that's that's all it is. Let's put them all for everybody to see. Right. Let's it, I, a judge can only be honest if he's being watched. Yeah. In a lot of cases. I mean, I hate to say that, but but it absolutely is. You put a camera in there where everybody can see it. It will change overnight. We have seen this happening in Texas. I don't know if you're familiar, but we've seen this happening in Texas because we are going into the courts as court watchers and video, um, the re remote hearings. We have something going on in Texas right now. Um, we have a gubernatorial race among the Republicans. Uh, we have three candidates, Don Huffines, Alan West, Chad Prather. They've all spoken out on this issue. Uh, to the place where they're talking about reforming child support to 50-50 uh, should be a default presumption mm -hmm. because that's parental equality at that point. Um, I, as you may know, I've, I've challenged the issue of no-fault divorce, unilateral no-fault divorce. There's no yeah. law behind that. We had a case at the Supreme Court. Um, we even got Greg Abbott to kind of commit on this thing. Now, I don't know what his real commitment is because it's political season yeah. but we even have him on, on on tape on audio stating that the family courts are atrocious i think is the word that he used so we cannot sugarcoat this we are here for the long run we are here to to make sure that this system is not passed down to our children and our grandchildren unfortunately right now some of the victims of this system are our children and our grandchildren for men, if you are out there, for grandparents, if you are out there, for mothers, if you are out there, we all need to fight this evil. Um, this is affecting every single one of us. Uh, even though it f affects men, more majority of instances it affects women as well, and it affects them even harder because it's not expected. Yeah. Grandparents, everybody, we're going to continue to fight this. We ask you to join us. Um, we, um, I don't know what else to say uh, <laughs> except that this is the big issue. We've always said, well, it's a social issue. It's not a social issue. This is the foundational issue that we need to be looking at. The family unit is the foundational uh, element of society. A absolutely, it is. A and again, uh, well, one thing that I would ha that I would like to touch on is dads. If you're out there, even grandparents, like you said, even women, be vocal. Stop be quiet when they tell you shut up and do what you're supposed to do don't do it just flat out be vocal start talking about it use your emotions we we are all human we're not just this you know robot that's supposed to just shut up and not talk about it when they tell you to do that don't do it the more that this gets out the more likely it's going to change and the less likely our children and our grandchildren are going to go through this and if we don't do that it's going to continue Take an example of the, from the people that are now protesting at school boards about the yeah. curriculum. They were shocked to see what was taking place. Had it not been for COVID, they would not have seen some of this insidious evil that's being indoctrinated into our children. And now they're outraged. Take a look at what's happening in these family courts. Every bit as bad as what's happening in our school system. You have to be educated and get outraged over it. Well, well everybody knows somebody who's gone through this i mean it's happened to enough people here in the country that everybody's got an uncle who's lost their kids or their dad did or you know somebody they know has or gone you through yourself this yourself are a person who's lost it, exactly so it, it is affecting absolutely every person on this in this country flat out uh, and for anybody to sit back and say oh well you know i've never seen it they've seen it you just maybe haven't noticed it but it's there it, you have seen it i mean there there's no there's no other way to really put that so if you sit back and look at this and go maybe that person actually didn't deserve to go through this instead of just presuming oh well the court said he's a bad person you know well the court only profits money when they say he's a bad person or they you know would, would again more likely to be a father but it, it's Maybe take a step back and look at that and go, well, maybe the court just wanted to make money. And the more that we actually look at that, 
the less likely it's going to happen. Yeah, it's an evil system. More greedy than what they call big farm or whatever. I mean, it, it <laughs> is just awful. Trevor, oh, I, oh, go ahead. Uh, I, I was going to say even the oil and gas industry. So <laughs> I, I didn't want to say that, but yeah, okay. But anyway, Trevor, I just want to thank you so much for the time that you've spent with us here. Thank you for um, your support for Dad Talk today. Um, always. And I was always I was glad to meet you in person. Um, anyway, I know that um, well, there's a lot of work to do. The, the road is not going to be easy, but. The thing is, is again, we had the, 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 the mothers up here from, I think it was Loudoun County in Virginia, talking about what they did to raise a ruckus, and now they're being labeled domestic terrorists. Oh, of course they are, because it doesn't go with the narrative. Right. <laughs> and, and you probably, when you start protesting this stuff, you may also be labeled a domestic terrorist. If you are, first off, fight against it. Number two, wear it as a badge of honor. Um, in a sense, because what is happening right now is we are being terrorized by people that wear black robes, that by people that have uh, a law degree, by people that are fake child custody evaluators and everything else, by private corporations that are snatching our kids. And, and, and have, on top of that, have qualified immunity. That well, should be gone, period, no matter what. The yeah. fact that, is, that a CPS worker can lie under oath and falsify documents and everything else and never have anything bad happen to them, that needs to go. Yeah. Flat, nobody on this planet should have qualified immunity. I don't care who you are. Right. You know, no, it should be able to be brought up. You should be able to have recourse. That's the only thing that keeps them in check. If we don't have that, they'll run rampant just to make profit. Yeah. There was a Supreme Court justice who said that public opinion is an effective bulwark against basically injustice in the, in the, in yeah. in the judiciary. And uh, yeah, we need all of those things. We need cameras in the courtrooms. We need to be able to hold some of these people accountable for their criminal actions because they are criminal actions. And um, anyway, we continue to do that. Um, Trevor, once again, <laughs> great pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, uh, and, and thanks for the coffee as well. Oh, anytime, man. <laughs> Talk Speaking with of which, we probably need another one. <laughs> I, that, that, good idea. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, Trevor. Take care. Thanks. Bye now. <laughs>